I found it only fitting that we end the session with Ukraine wartime comms, the impact of comms when dealing with the worst possible crisis. And we are very fortunate to have Julia Petrick, the head of PR for Macaw, the co-founder of the Ukrainian PR Army. I know that you know, there's a lot of talk about, oh, it took me so long to get here, I had to travel. This person had to travel, probably one of the most difficult travels because there are no direct flights out of our country in a war-torn country. So please, please help me in welcoming Julia Petrick to the stage as she gives us her question for the afternoon. You can. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming for this final session. I'm sure it's been the most personal one. Uh, where I will share my very, very hands-on experience um, dealing with crisis. So, this is a map where I come from. This is Kiev, uh, the place where the company I work for, it's Macpo, is based. It's not like a self-promotion part, it's the contextual part, and you will keep it in mind and understand why I mentioned that. So Macpo is a software developer. Every fifth Mac on Earth runs at least one app by Macpo. If you're a Mac user, probably you've heard of or used Clean My Mac, Setup, the Unarchiver. Uh, so uh, overall, we have more than 30 million users worldwide, being a Ukraine-born company. What comes to your mind when you hear Ukraine? I assume Zelensky, <laughs> or probably, and sadly, war. Um, some intro. Ukraine is uh, one of the biggest manufacturers of um, sunflower, corn, and wheat. Besides, it gave the world uh, prolific uh, cultural heritage. Uh, carol, Christmas Carol, the melody everybody knows very well that you are unpacking your Christmas presents to, uh, was um, created by the Ukrainian composer. Uh, the first mass production helicopter, which was widely used by the US Air Forces, was designed by the Ukrainian engineer Sikorsky. Grammarly. Raise your hands who knows, uses Gravely. I bet you do. Uh, this is a Ukraine-born company, and uh, John Murphy also mentioned with Speecher. So it's a land of great tech talent as well. What comes to your mind when you hear crisis? Probably some negative comments in social media, or drop of stock price, or product recalls. For us, crisis meant war. <laughs> that morning changed everything. We woke up at, on the 24th of February by the sounds of explosions. And um, uh, the streets, I, I walked, like I looked outside my window, and the street was uh, unusually busy. This is how the roads looked like on that morning in Kiev. That red river uh, is the lights of cars, people leaving the city, escaping, trying to take care of their own safety, safety of their families, kids. There were long lines to get gas, food, medicine. A lot of people were panicking. And uh, it usually takes up to six hours to get to the border from Kiev. On that day, um, people who started the journey, it took them up to six days. Uh, despite the challenges that we were facing as humans, as citizens, as um, Kiev inhabitants, as communicators, we had professional challenges as well. We need to communicate with the team about their safety. We need to ensure customers who pay subscriptions for the apps that we develop, that the products are stable and nothing will happen to them. 
make a company statement and contribute to the victory through communications. We analyzed the risks. Um, I don't know how you follow the agenda, uh, I mean, how deep you are into the context, but there were rumors that it's going to happen, but we never expected it to happen on that scale. So uh, the risks that we analyzed before the invasions were physical danger to team members, no internet connection, um, office occupied by the invaders, it could be, uh, as it was in the cities where Russian troops occupied the territories in Mariupol or elsewhere. Increased cyber attacks on company services, increased phishing attacks on employees, and supply chain disruptors. Uh, just to give you an idea how those days were looked like for us, the first picture is um, the parking, the garage, in the place where I live, that white car on the background is ours. We slept nights there because it is supposed to be like the shelter in Israel. Um, buildings are more <laughs> prepared for that uh, in our reality. Um, some people stayed in the subway, in the underground, uh, and we spent our li uh, nights there. You see like a granny with a baby carriage, um, taking care uh, and um, uh, taking care of the safety of the newborn baby. And the next picture um, shows um, the reality of daytime when we worked from um, the places where there are no windows. Uh, but we worked, we didn't stop, and uh, I made decision to stay in Kiev. That was our family decision. And uh, partially it was because on that uh, responsibility of providing proper communications as well. So before the invasion, what, what we did, uh, we established alternative comms channels and procedures via signal, because it was rumored that if there is no internet connection or it is very slow, our corporate um, channel, communication channel Slack wouldn't cope with it. That's why we chose Signal as the secure and uh, all the managers were instructed how to communicate and created several groups of team members. We prepared emergency backpacks for employees. That's on the web, on the picture. Um, it had some power banks in case we had no electricity power, uh, some lanterns, uh, and uh, uh, tactical medicine. Before the company com conducted trainings on. Um, first aid, and even uh, on uh, disinformation and mental health. And we put all the products that we develop into code freeze mode, meaning that no changes were made to the products. No updates, no upgrades, no new releases, because in case something goes wrong, it can be no one to fix it because everything was so changing very fast that we couldn't predict what would happen next minute, next second. Uh, the channels that we used, I already mentioned Signal. On Slack, the engineers who were stuck abroad when the full-scale full invasion started, they developed a solution for quick check-in through Slack while we still had internet and the connection was stable. Um, it was a very fast and convenient solution when you can check in with one button, letting your managers know that you are safe. So when we have like some attack, bad news circulating, we would send push notifications through Slack and people would uh, check in very fast and then we even uh, shared that technology with the industry in Ukraine uh, for letting other companies use that check very fast check-in process. Uh, we also used corporate blogs, obviously social media, email, and our products. I will demonstrate in what way. This is how I worked during daytimes. You saw where I slept in the car, and this is how I worked, where all those statements were posted. And... Um, this picture was supposed to be uh, really changing. Um, a lot of 
companies, a lot of media outreach for comments and like ask to provide pictures. We had no time for that, but uh, I remember that my daughter had uh, lectures, online lectures, and because of the bombing and attack happening, she was in the hallway and I was in the bathroom and she took picture of me. And that uh, was the headline maker. Uh, Cult of Mark, first company, even Nikkei Asia. It may seem as vanity matrix, but this picture helped um, to run a special campaign, a creative one, with the help of a, a US-based agency, which was called Bathtub Creative. If uh, you have time, Google for it, at age covered it. Um, there was a story about the agency, which uh, works from bath rooms, bathtubs. It, like sounds very weird, but then you find out that this is not a fake agency. This is the reality of Ukrainian employees. And we raised a lot of money and bought uh, hygienic products for people in deoccupied territories. Uh, then when it comes to security, um, what we did, gathered an emergency response team. A lot of people were stuck traveling, they need some accommodation for um, spending night. Uh, someone was uh, looking for uh, medicine and there was an emergency response team to deal with all those requests. Uh, we moved all the infrastructure to the cloud. Luckily, uh, our payment provider was outside the country. It's the UK-based company. Uh, our main servers were outside the country, but still what, what was in Ukraine was moved to the cloud. Uh, set up satellite internet connection. Back then, Elon Musk had such a great reputation in Ukraine thanks to Starlink. And uh, it was like a big deal to buy Starlink equipment, but it helped a lot, both civilians and our brave army on the front line. Uh, gathered the core comms team, we were bombarded with the media request and we need to respond very quickly, uh, answer our questions because we needed attention. We needed attention of the global community no matter what kind of circles they represent, on either political or business or tech. And we prepared a statement that <clears throat> actually the statement was written in a draft. And when I was reviewing it, I was like suggesting, we are too emotional here. We should like be more objective. Oh, no, 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 we are too emotional. But when that morning came, I wanted to be the most emotional person in the world because you are facing danger, you are facing uh, fear, you are facing death. And this is not like the scenario you are prepared to. So in our statement, we uh, made sure that our team members are safe, users' data is safe, uh, services and products are stable and operational, and ways to help Ukraine. Uh, this is how it looks and um, uh, what, was, what is um, um, valuable that it was written on behalf of our CEO and leadership did matter. Uh, I'm so thankful to Alexander who was available at any time of the day. I, I don't remember us uh, sleeping <laughs> properly during the first week uh, and uh, he was available all the time for the interviews and uh, we provided information what's going on and we called our clients, our customers, our partners to stand with Ukraine. Uh, learnings from that uh, experience. You can prepare a plan, but you can never be ready to face the war. But still prepare a plan. Uh, communicate clearly and transparently. Don't be silent, otherwise your enemy will take that attention. Uh, fight for truth whenever possible. As I mentioned that we also used our products as one of the channels of communicating. We were able to put that banner on the interface of uh, our flagship product Clean My Mac, but targeting only Russian and Belarus based users. And the banner, I don't know if someone speaks Russian, said in, in, in Russian. So like the call to action was get the truth, know the truth. Um, 
back then we were naive that it would work. We got tons of curses our support team <laughs> were handling with the Russian curses uh, coming to their support email. Uh, and uh, that banner would lead to the blog post, which would just cover why it is important to know what's happening in Ukraine and reliable sources to follow, uh, Russian speaking and English speaking. Uh, it didn't work, but in two days, we got a message from the biggest uh, censorship body in Russia that they feature, they list uh, a blog of the tech company among the forbidding in Russia. So uh, our blog was not available in Russia anymore, but we were joking that it was small but victory, that they noticed and that they were trying to control the media field. Uh, lesson four, be accessible for media despite anything. As I mentioned that I talked to media from my bathtub and uh, this is uh, our founder, CEO, is, given, is talking to Yahoo Finance. Um, if you may recognize the interior, it's uh, a car, it's Tesla. And uh, he was speaking even at 3 a.m., even during the air raid alerts. Uh, and supposedly back then was um, another attack and he was in his garage uh, talking to media. Um, Within the first months of the invasion, uh, our uh, media mentions increased by 7.7 .7 times. And I would say that uh, our workload in increased like just th the same volume. Uh, me media reach was uh, huge, but I'm talking about vanity, we needed that attention. And we did everything possible to get that intention, uh, attention and not letting the world forget what's going on in the center of Europe. These are some examples of uh, media headlines, um, how we made, and, and all of them were earned thanks to the relations that we built with media and thanks to the incoming requests that we were uh, very fastly uh, processing. Lesson find five, benefit from the relations you've built with stakeholders. That was the situation when finally all the businesses understood the value of public relations. Sadly, it happens in the times of the biggest crisis, but the war demonstrated how important it was to build relations. So we faced enormous support from the global community. Uh, partners suggested help, our customers outreach to our support team, providing help and asking how we can donate to help you. Uh, authors dedicated Substack newsletters, Medium uh, posts uh, to Ukraine, our MacPo and other Ukraine-born companies. And, um, uh, we even provided our vendors an opportunity to leave part of their revenue um, in, inside the system so that it can be used for charity. Uh, this is just an example of some earned coverage and people made uh, roundups uh, asking people to buy Ukraine-born products. Uh, this is a great initiative by Ukrainians called Spend with Ukraine, a website that lists Ukraine-born products in tech, in fashion, um, initiating people to buy products which are produced uh, and manufactured in Ukraine to support economy because a lot of uh, plants were destroyed and we desperately need some help uh, of our economy. Uh, MACPA Foundation, it's um, the foundation by our company. It existed for a while, but as we got tons of uh, requests to donate somewhere, at first we provided a list of trusted sources where people could donate, but then people ask, um, like, can we like do it directly to, to you. And that's why we made MACPA Foundation publicly. And when someone says that public relations is difficult to measure or like it is measured in very intangible assets, uh, during this year, 
we managed to raise uh, $900,000 from our customers and partners. This is huge. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we, we never run any fundraising campaign. Everything we did is that we provided information that I remember it was probably once or twice that it's available and people willingly donate. We have uh, even uh, an email from our customer uh, who wants to donate his house somewhere in Ohio to Ukrainian army. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know like uh, what response he got, but uh, the help from the community was huge. And uh, even the MACPA Foundation, which is supposed to be a charity fund that has nothing to do with tech media, but thanks to our relationship with media, they even covered that story about charity foundation. Help where possible. Back then, uh, we were on such adrenaline that uh, we looked for more opportunities to provide help to, to the country and to our community. Uh, let's say we uh, provided free access of our VPN product to all the Ukrainians. It was a big challenge for people who stayed in occupied territories, in territories occupied by Russia, to give access, to get access to truth. Because um, once, what they do is they cut out internet, they uh, streamline their federal news, so the Russian media, and uh, it was a big challenge for people to know the truth, get access to it. Then we also developed and launched Spybuster. Uh, it's uh, an app which was literally developed in a bomb shelter. Uh, that can be installed either on a Mac or an iOS, so on our iPhone, to check whether you have any uh, apps running uh, which are affiliated in any possible way with Russia. They are not supposed to be spyware like all of them, not obligatory, but uh, it was at least a way to find out and unite efforts. Uh, just to demonstrate the level of Ukrainian resilience, I will, show, I will tell you that uh, within the first hours of the full-scale invasion, when all those horrors happened, we need to make decisions, we need to communicate. Ukrainian um, PR practitioners created a uh, PR army. And this is a nonprofit that started within the first hours. That's crazy. When I recall those moments, I, it's still beyond my understanding how it was possible. Uh, so in, in one chat, uh, we decided to unite efforts and outreach to media that we have relations with and tell what's going on. Uh, our primary idea was to provide access to eyewitnesses to describe what we see from our windows, what we see in, in the news, I mean like in the streets. And uh, we were helping in some way even the government because they were very, very busy and uh, overloaded with those requests. Uh, the main goal of PR Army is to make sure that Ukrainian voices are present and heard in the international media. Uh, so we are working with, uh, we are still working, we've been uh, operating since uh, February 24th uh, for more than a year and now it's, um, uh, I would say, an organization because at first it was a mess, but now it's an organization with processes and even streams. Um, the streams we are working with is, for example, disinformation resi uh, resistance, uh, Ukrainian resilience, trade ban, etc. One of the streams we are very popular, uh, we are very proud of. Uh, it's called "Where Our People." It's a stream that uh, we started uh, for working uh, with the topic of illegal deportation of Ukrainians from occupied territories. It's not about media coverage and leveraging the topic of illegal deportation. It's also about advocacy and probably you've heard that it's already acknowledged as a crime and Putin is uh, awaited in the court for illegal deportation. The worst part of it is that they tend to, they, they, the wording matters, they say they evacuate, but in fact they deport uh, kids from occupied territories and make them 
being fostered by Russian families. And this is, uh, this is actually an act, a genocidal act when the identity of Ukrainians will be erased as they are not allowed to speak Ukrainian. And if they are very little, they would never discover their origin. Um, PR Army results are impressive within the first um, several months of this existence. And it may sound as vanity matrix, but talking about shifting from vanity to value, I will give you my favorite example of the activity of the PR Army. Thanks to the efforts uh, of our community, we managed to we have two cases. When we, we managed, thanks to exposure and media coverage we got, uh, we managed to release men from, two men from Russian captivity. The value of communication is more than just business outcome sales. It's someone's life and someone's dignity. And I'm so proud of, of the profession, of the community, that they made it possible. And uh, this is just uh, an activist who was kept uh, by Russian troops. And thanks to this article, and not only this article, but uh, a combination of efforts, uh, he was released. I think this is Mm, a reason <laughs> to give applause to our community. I mean, professional community all over the world. <laughs> and, and on behalf of my country, my people, I know that uh, there are people from all over the world here, and we had conversations. And I want to thank everybody who was not indifferent, who paid attention to the news, what's going on in Ukraine, who shared that news, who donated. And uh, this video uh, is to all of you. It's Ukrainian way to say uh, thank you. It's Dyakuyu. Not so long ago, my life was rather ordinary. Waking up much too early, a cup of coffee, better kitty goodbye for the day. All of this may seem familiar to you, prosaic, yet I loved every minute of it. However, now I know parallel realities exist simultaneously in our world. Not far from where you peacefully laid your head down to sleep each night, while I was terrified of so many things. But you were there for me. You greeted us, offered food and clothes, took care of our injured kids and even pets. You donate, protect our rights and restore our home. For saving our lives and dignity, I, we, say Dякую. 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 Tell Dyakuyu to those who responded to our call for help. Shed light and celebrate their contribution with us. Dyakuyu. I think anyone who has a reservation about the power of communication and storytelling has just seen a new light. And that's the power that can be measured. You know, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for making the effort to be here, for going above and beyond. Thank you for all of the work that you've done and for being inspirational to so many people. One question for you. What can an international community of PR, comms pros, analysts do to help? Uh, thank you so much. Actually, I would say that 
Um, it can be on different levels. First of all, don't forget about Ukraine. Don't forget about the genocidal war happening in the center of Europe. Then stop calling it war in Ukraine. <laughs> Say Russian invasion to Ukraine, if you still do. And uh, we are open to suggestions. We would be very helpful for help with tools, expertise, um, resources. By the way, I, it seems to me that I saw Greg from Mockrack. Thank you for your contribution to democracy. Uh, so a lot of um, tools uh, uh, provided free access uh, during those crazy days. And actually, thanks to tools, thanks to automation, PR Army is still operating. Otherwise, it would last only two, three days. It was next to impossible to operate in that crazy environment, but we had a lot of partners offering help and it worked. Uh, we are still operating, we are growing, we are hiring, we are working on more and more new streams. That's why um, it's, you know, like there is some meme circulating. You don't need to be of some views to help Ukraine, you just need to be human. So, yeah, I expect everybody to be human and not to be <laughs> indifferent uh, to, to what is going on. Beautiful. Thank you again, Julia, so much. Thank we you. really appreciate you.